Hey guys, it's your girl Tina here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be making my very own custom rug. If you guys are new here, welcome to my channel. Don't forget to click subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any future uploads. I've always wanted to try a rug making after seeing all these cool videos on TikTok and I happened to come across Tough Club on Instagram. They're a rug tufting studio in Singapore and they offer workshops where you can learn the craft. Tufting is a modern take on the traditional craft of rug making. It involves using a tufting gun to weave yarn through a cloth to create different patterns and designs and you're able to make different size rugs. So this is the Tough Club studio where all the rug making magic happens and here are some really cool designs made by their students. Pretty impressive, huh? After seeing all these pieces, I knew I was in good hands. So to get started, first you need to prepare your canvas. This involves stretching out a piece of monk's cloth on the frame and ensuring that it's nice and taut and secure. The excess cloth is then trimmed away. They actually DIY'd this frame setup so you can actually easily make one at home if you can get your hands on some plywoods and nails. Then it's time to sketch the design. I actually found some really cool swirl patterns on Pinterest and they had a projector there that connected to my phone and I pretty much used that to trace out my lines. Then I went in and marked and planned which colors I wanted to use. Afterwards, I felt like I needed some flowers, so then I just drew some flowers on top of these swells. And beside me was Alfred, and he was working on this super cute little custom rug for Biscuit, our dog. He had like the cutest poodle design ever. So now that we have our design all traced out on our cloth, it's time to check out the tufting gun and learn how to use it. This is the cut pile tufting gun. It has a needle that pushes the yarn through the cloth and then little scissors that come out to cut the yarn afterwards. This is how you get that very fuzzy effect on the other side. Here's the on off switch the trigger to get the gun going and there's a dial at the bottom that you can use to adjust the speed. As a beginner, I just stuck with a low speed and some important tips I learned are you need to use both hands and keep them leveled. So you don't want to be tilting the gun upwards or downwards as the scissors can kind of puncture the cloth and cut some pretty big holes in your rug. You also need to have like a good stance because you'll be pushing the gun into the cloth with some pressure, but not too much. And then once you press the trigger, the gun starts going. It's a good idea to have a quick practice session before you get started on your piece. Practice going in different directions from bottom to top, going to the left, going to the right, because it will feel a little bit different each time. Now, I was a little scared at first, I'm not gonna lie, because this gun can move pretty fast, but all you need is a little bit of practice. We each spent about five minutes just playing around with the gun, getting a feel for it, and then once we felt confident, we were ready to get started on our actual pieces. Now we're ready to pick our colors. I opted for a retro feel with my pinks, yellows and oranges. And then Alfred opted for different shades of brown to make the best looking poodle rug you can imagine. For our tufting gun, we needed two spools of yarn of the same color and we threaded it through these little loops on the frame. This is just going to help separate each yarn. And then we use a loop to thread it through the gun and we were locked and loaded. Ready for some action, baby. To start, I outlined the center of my flower. I did this in two sections because you're meant to tuft from bottom to top, always working in an upwards motion. 
So I tried my best to follow my circle, but as you can see, I did a pretty bad job. It was like a very wonky abstract circle, but it's okay. It's not the end of the world. Now I'm filling in the center using upward weaves and leaving a tiny gap in between each line. So I'm just going to repeat this until the area is filled and I am left with this. The side you're seeing is the working side or the back, so it can look a little bit messy, but when you look at it from the other side, the front, it looks like this. I have a little furry pom-pom. Alfred actually had a knack for tufting. They said that guys have an easier time doing this because you do need a little bit of pressure. So he was just like on a roll, like he was outlining that dog like he was a pro. Zen also started her rug. She's doing a rug mirror, so her design is going to frame the mirror that's going to go in the center. After finishing the center of my flowers, I got started on the petals and I used like an off-white yarn. This is when I felt like I was kind of getting it, you know, I was getting to the groove of it, I was getting the hang of it, I was in the zone, working on my petals. I repeated the same process of outlining first, then filling in the spaces in between. On the other side, you can see my flowers coming together. And voila, here they are. We have three. Here's Alfred filling in his dog. He's absolutely killing it and zooming through the whole process. He even turned up the speed on his tufting gun cause low was too slow. He had a need for speed. What's super funny is that I could hear him complimenting his work and saying how cute it looked. He was becoming a very proud rug maker indeed. On my side, I was taking things slow and steady, working on my swirls. I weaved all the yellow parts first, then I moved on to the next color. That way I didn't have to keep changing my spools. The process is pretty much the same, so I'm just gonna speed it up for you guys and you guys can see all our pieces coming together. As I was working on my piece and just in the zone, I actually kind of feel like it's one of those crafts that you just zone out and forget about all your problems and just focus on what's in front of you. Rug tufting definitely involves your whole body. You know, you need to be in the stance, you're using both hands, you're trying to be accurate with where you're weaving. In a way, it's a little bit challenging, but it's also very rewarding when you like turn around and look at the other side and just see what you're creating. It's definitely a labor of love. Alfred over here, he is just killing it. He's just fixing up his work. He finished way ahead of me. And now he's just perfecting everything. But look at that. It is so cute. Once we were done with our rug, the other side is cleaned up and trimmed just to make sure everything is looking even and nice. Mm -hmm. 
voila here are all our pieces we are so happy with how they turned out they look like legit rugs that you can buy at the store like i would totally pay for these the last step is to glue the back so all the yarn stays in place and this is left to dry and the guys at the tough club will actually finish off the rugs and apply a backing here are the finished rugs look how good they look once they're trimmed and finished it was such a fun craft to try and i'd highly recommend it the best part is seeing biscuit enjoy the rugs she loves laying on it and it's become her new bed that's it for today's video i hope you guys have enjoyed it don't forget to click subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos that i post and i shall speak to you guys next time bye Bang, doo doo doo.